Hello my friends, this is Libby from EngineNerds.org. Delivering chemistry lessons in behalf of Chemical Engineering Philippines. On this video, we will be talking about the common chemistry laboratory apparatus and tools. This is a common topic in high school and chemistry students, so let us now dive to our featured topic. The first time you visit a chemistry laboratory, it is normal to feel a little bit overwhelmed about the apparatus and tools that you will see. You are like a small kid in a completely new environment. If you will be working with these apparatus and tools, it is extremely important to be familiar with these tools in order to work safely. Working safely with hazardous chemicals requires proper use of laboratory equipment. Many of the accidents that occur in the laboratory can be attributed to improper use of laboratory equipment. So, we will discuss today the common apparatus and tools that you will be using inside the chemistry laboratory. The first in our list is what we call a beaker. A beaker is a simple container for stirring, mixing and heating liquids commonly used in many laboratories. Beakers are generally cylindrical in shape, with a flat bottom and a lip for pouring. You can see here the horizontal lines to represent units of measurement to measure the volume of liquids. Next is another very common laboratory glassware, and you are probably seeing this already in pictures and even in movies. I am talking about test tubes. It is also known as a culture tube. It is a hollow cylinder of thin glass with one end closed, used in chemical and biological experimentation and analysis. It test tube is a common piece of laboratory glassware consisting of a finger-like length of glass. It is used to hold a small experiment, which would be used to conduct an investigation. And now let me show you the test tube holder. It is obviously designed to hold test tubes. However, it can be used to hold pipettes and stirring rods as well. It is used for holding a test tube in place when the tube is hot or should not be touched. As you can see in the photograph, the test tube holder is used while the liquid inside the test tube is being heated. You will find it really useful in holding test tubes while it is hot or when it is not intended to be touched by bare hands. And since test tube usually contains liquids or other chemical samples, you will always have to keep it upright. Otherwise, the chemicals inside the test tube will spill out. This is where test tube racks will be very useful. Test tube racks are laboratory equipment used to hold upright multiple test tubes at the same time. They are especially useful for organizing test tubes when different solutions are being worked on or collected at once. Test tube racks also provide protective storage for test tubes and make transporting and cleaning test tubes much easier. And next we have the graduated cylinder. It is a narrow, cylindrical container marked with horizontal lines to represent units of measurement and used to precisely measure the volume of liquids. This is what we use in the laboratory to get the precise volume of the liquid. As you can see in the photograph, there are horizontal lines to represent units of measurement to precisely measure the volume of liquids. And next we have the Florence flask. It has a round body with a single long neck and with a flat bottom. It can be used as a container to hold solutions of chemicals. It is designed for uniform heating and ease of swirling. You have to take note of the shape of the Florence flask, so you will not get confused when we start showing you the other types of flasks. Now let us talk about the Erlenmeyer flask. It is also known as a conical flask. It is a widely used type of laboratory flask which features a flat bottom, a conical body, and a cylindrical neck. Erlenmeyer flasks are suitable for heating liquids. Another simple, but important tool in the laboratory is a funnel. It is a pipe with a wide, often conical mouth and a narrow stem. It is used to channel liquid or fine-grained substances into containers with a small opening. Have a look at the photograph on the right. If you directly pour the liquid from the beaker to the Erlenmeyer flask, 
chances are there are some fluids that will spill and will not be transferred to the flask because of the narrow mouth or opening of the flask. This way, a funnel will be very useful to ensure successful transfer of fluid from one container to another. Now let us talk about the mortar and pestle. It is used to grind substances into powder or slurry. A mortar and pestle are used to grind up solid chemicals into a fine powder and crush solids into smaller pieces. If you are not so sure how mortar and pestle works, have a look at this video. Let me show you another laboratory tool called crucibles with its cover. It is a ceramic container capable of withstanding extreme temperatures. Crucibles are used for a range of purposes and are particularly common amongst chemists for the chemical analysis of various substances. A type of laboratory glassware used to burn, melt or mix solid chemical compounds over a burner. Another container used in the laboratory is what we called reagent bottles. These are containers made of glass, plastic, by special caps or stoppers and are intended to contain chemicals in liquid or powder form for laboratories and stored in cabinets or on shelves. You probably seen this already in the laboratory. The next laboratory apparatus and tools are better understood if you know how it is used. Have a look at the photograph below. The tools that we will be discussing next are those used in heating containers and chemicals. We have here the wire gauze, the tripod and the Bunsen burner. These three are commonly used this way, but of course other application is also possible. Let us discuss these items one by one. First we have the Bunsen burner. It is a device for combining a flammable gas with controlled amounts of air before ignition. It produces a hotter flame than would be possible using the ambient air and gas alone. Next we have the wire gauze. It is a sheet of thin metal that has net-like patterns or a wire mesh. It is an important piece of supporting equipment in a laboratory as glassware cannot be heated directly with the flame of a Bunsen burner and requires the use of a wire gauze to diffuse the heat, helping to protect the glassware. The use of a wire gauze in an experiment is to place under the container holding the liquid that is being heated by the Bunsen burner so that the container doesn't t have direct contact with the flame. And then, as you already know, we have the tripod. It is a three-legged equipment, generally used as a platform of some sort. This lab equipment is used to support and hold various flasks, beakers and other glass where during experiments. We also have what we call a stirring rod. Also called glass stirring rod, glass rod, stirring rod or stir rod. And as the name implies, it is a piece of laboratory equipment used to mix chemicals. Another tool that we use in the laboratory is what we call the laboratory tongs. Do not get confused between the tongs and the test tube holders. Their functions are different. Laboratory tongs are large pincers for grasping and lifting vessels of heat-resistant material used in high-temperature chemical reactions. Next in our list is the pipette. It is a slender graduated tube used in a laboratory for measuring and transferring quantities of liquids from one container to another. If it is not clear to you what a pipette does, have a look at this video. This demonstration is to show you how we pipette using a serological pipette. The pipette that I'm holding has three markings, 0.5 ml, 1.0, and 1.1 ml. I'm going to place the pipette pumper on the top of the pipette. Putting my thumb on the wheel, I'm going to dip the pipette into the liquid, rotate the wheel in a downward motion, 
and I'm going to draw the liquid to the 1.0 line. To expel, press down on the plunger. If I would like to expel 0.1 ml, I'm going to draw the liquid to the 1.1 line, putting my thumb on the wheel, I'm going to rotate my, the wheel upward until the liquid goes from 1.1 to 1.0. I've just expelled 0.1 mLs from the pipette. To expel the remaining 1 mL of liquid, press down on the plunger. And now we have the microscope, which of course you probably already know. It is an optical instrument having a magnifying lens or a combination of lenses for inspecting objects too small to be seen or too small to be seen distinctly and in detail by the unaided eye. There are definitely a lot more laboratory apparatus, equipment and tools that we did not discuss on this video. We however cover those most common apparatus and tools that you will be seeing in the chemistry laboratory. Hopefully in other lessons, we will be able to cover those other apparatus and tools. But for now, let us just focus on these tools. To practice what you have learned and prepare for your exam, take the online quiz on the next lesson. Have a nice day.